guys, welcome back to my channel and today I'll be covering the structure of human eye. Let's first discuss about its location. You obviously know it's present in our skull and the two holes in which it's present in our skull are known as orbits. And the diameter of a human eye, which is circular in shape, is about 2.5 centimeters. It is ectomesodermal in origin. So as you know, most of our organs are derived from the germ cells. And these germ cells are arranged into three layers, endoderm, mesoderm, and ectoderm. So our eye is ectomesodermal in origin, and we're gonna learn about its structures now. So when we talk about a human eye, it can be divided into two basic parts. One has the protective function, and the other is the eyeball. Our eyeball is the most biological part of it. The ones which have a protective function are again divided into some subparts. The first one is our eyebrows. So our eyebrows help in stopping trickling water droplets or sweat droplets from coming into our eyes. Similarly, our eyelids. We have two pairs of eyelids in our eyes and they help in hydrating the cornea. So when our eyelids close, it helps in keeping the cornea hydrated. And finally, we obviously have our eyelashes, which prevent dust and other particles from entering our eyes. And apart from these, there are a few other things that have protective functions. And those are the glands that are present in our eyes. And these glands, uh, I'm just gonna be talking about two major ones. One is meibonian glands. These glands are modified sebaceous glands. And the other one is lacrimal glands. These glands are modified sweat glands and lacrimal glands produce tears in our eyes which also contain lysozymes which are bacteria killing agents. So apart from that uh, we have two other glands, glands of Z's and moon. Now let us talk about the major part or the eyeball. When we talk about the eyeball let's come from the outermost layer to the innermost layer. So the outermost layer here is known as sclera. Okay, sclera is also known as fibrous tunica. Okay, so now this sclera, its anterior end, anterior means in the front, its anterior end is known as cornea. Okay, it's a thin membrane which is present, which is the outermost layer of our eye. And the special thing about cornea is that it does not have any blood supply. So there is a particular application for this. Some people undergo cornea transplant. So for those people, they don't really have to take immunosuppressants all their life because this particular tissue in our body does not have any blood supply. Anyways, coming to the next part, uh, there is another thing in sclera known as conjunctiva. And this conjunctiva basically covers cornea and the other exposed part of the sclera. Okay? So uh, next come to the next layer of the eyeball, which I've marked with red color here. So let me just use a red pen. This one is the choroid layer. Choroid layer is also known as vascular tunica. Now this choroid is pretty much very thin at the posterior part. Posterior, posterior is the backwards part of it. So two thirds part of it is pretty thin. But when it comes to the front, it thickens. Also, choroid is known as vascular tunica because in the choroid, all the other blood vessels and etc. are present. And it also has a blue color to it. I marked it with red for some reason. I don't know. Anyways, let's come to the anterior part of choroid. So this anterior part, it keeps thickening from here to form these muscles. Now this muscle, this thick muscle is known as ciliary muscle and this ciliary muscle again extends to form this muscle. The thickened dark one you're seeing here is iris. Now ciliary and iris muscles are pigmented, especially the iris muscle and these muscles basically help in adjusting the aperture of our eye. So basically when light enters our eye, our eye can control the amount of light that is entering with the help of these muscles. <clears throat> and these muscles hold the lens, the crystalline lens in our eyes in place with the help of tendons. So the iris muscle is colored 
and this iris muscle is the one that gives you your eye color so for me my iris muscle is dark brown in color for blue eyed people their iris muscle is blue in color anyways so we know the function of ciliary and iris muscles they help in maintaining the aperture of the lens this is the lens okay now let's talk about pupil so we know that these two muscles help in maintaining the aperture or the diameter of our pupil and pupil is the gap through which light enters our lens so this gap you are seeing here this gap is known as our pupil so ciliary and iris muscle control the diameter of pupil now apart from this let's come to uh, other parts of our eye which are known as the different humors so this area between cornea and the lens it has a specific kind of fluid in here which is known as aqueous humor okay and this area which is in between lens and the posterior layers i'll be talking about retina later so that is known as vitreous humor now the difference between these two humors are this is watery in nature aqueous humor and vitreous humor is kind of jelly like substance so obviously this is denser than aqueous humor also vitreous humor has this particular jelly known as hortens jelly so we're done with that we know that sclera is made up of dense connective tissue choroid is made up of vascular tissue let's come to retina now retina is the innermost layer okay this layer that you see is retina and light when it's refracted from the lens falls directly onto the retina now this retina is known as neurosensory tunica it is called neurosensory because this layer is the one that converts the light signals into electric signals that are further taken into our brain so let's look at the structure of the retina which is very complex so this blue layer is the sclera this red layer is the choroid now let's come to retina you see these blue boxes right here these are pigmented cuboidal epithelium so our retina is made up of cuboidal epithelium apart from that these three layers of cells which i'm going to talk about now are neurosensory so the first layer here are photoreceptors so photoreceptor cells as the name conveys it they sense photons photons in the sense light so now a really weird aspect of this is we would obviously expect these photoreceptor cells to be the first ones lining the surface because light will directly fall on them but it's the opposite here turns out the photoreceptor cells are the outermost ones as compared to these cells okay which i'm going to talk about so after photoreceptor cells let me just remove it we have bipolar cells these blue ones are known as bipolar cells now these bipolar cells as the name says they have two polarities we've also done it in the nerves videos i've done before so they have one axon and one dendrite so these bipolar cells attach the photoreceptor cells to the ganglion cells now these ganglion cells are the innermost ones of the retina okay these ganglion cells they take the impulse from photoreceptors to bipolar to ganglion and these ganglion cells ultimately take it to the optic nerve so this is about the structure of our eye when we come to its technicalities the mechanism of vision etc that's all what i'm going to cover in the next video we're going to talk about rods cones the different parts of eyes which we haven't covered yet so yeah thank you so much for watching and i'll keep you guys posted